Good afternoon to you. Mark out of HurricaneTrack.com here with your second hurricane outlook and discussion for Sunday, July the 9th, 2017. I want to show you what's happening with the tropical wave. This is the latest text from the tropical weather discussion from the National Hurricane Center and the Tropical Analysis Forecast Branch. A tropical wave is just offshore the coast of Africa. It is moving westward at about 10 knots, so it's not moving very fast. That's a key ingredient there. Both water vapor imagery and the total precipitable water imagery animation confirm that deep tropical moisture continues to increase over and near the environment of this wave, mainly attributed to it being entrenched within a very pronounced monsoonal flow, and we showed that earlier uh, on the morning update, that has set up along and off the coast of West Africa etc. So it's definitely being mentioned here. It's noticeable. We've been analyzing that ourselves. And I want to show you this. I tried to put together somewhat of an animation here using three different images. And this is the tropical wave that we're talking about. And you can tell that it definitely has somewhat of a curved look to it. There's some, uh, you could call it outflow or whatever, but it's it's got somewhat of that look. It's not there yet. It's still pretty weak, but watch this as I go through the images. So this is the first one, this is the second one, and this is the third one. If we just go back, one, two, three, and we do it again, two, three, you can see that there's definitely some broad turning in here with this system, and that's, you know, the beginnings of the vorticity that we have looked at, and we can see that later on the vorticity shot here, but at least you can tell that it is there. If we go back one more time over the last several hours, you can clearly see that it's marching along, not very fast, but it's definitely got some broad turning associated with it. So we have something there. And this is very important, trying to set all this up and trying to figure out the computer models and what they do or do not say. The total precipitable water that was mentioned in the tropical weather discussion, you can see that here deep moisture coming off the coast of Africa. This is the tropical wave and the more abundant uh, heat source and moisture down here to the south and uh, southeast of the Cape Verde Islands. And, you know, again, it's tapped into this monsoon trough, uh, embedded in there. So it's got a lot of things going for it in terms of the environment around it. We are not seeing tremendous amounts of this blue and purple in here being forced in over the top of this system and in fact the moisture plume out ahead of this would argue that it has a chance to develop so it's definitely worth watching. Now this is important again the vorticity signature how much spin does this system have it's you know very small right now it's not very noticeable it's still in its very early stages but there it is almost due south now of the Cape Verde Islands and this is what I look for when I see if, as an example, the global forecast system, the GFS, initialized things properly. So remember this shape right here, and then we go to the GFS initial map from the 12Z run. So this is this morning's run. It comes out in the early part of the afternoon, and we can analyze it. So this is the initial condition, hour zero. All right, right here, hour zero, ver verify time, zero, zero, zero. Look, it even has the shape pretty much spot on. I don't know how they ingest this information. That would be fascinating to know someday. But even the shape there, uh, whatever you want to call that shape, looks pretty much like this shape right here. Wouldn't you agree? So at least it has you know, the same look to the vorticity signature uh, as the an analysis does, because this is an analysis picture. This is the initial condition from the global forecast system. All right, so all that being said, let's put this into motion. Go back to the first image here. So this is what you're going to be looking at right down here. I'm going to highlight it for you in yellow. There it is right there, and just watch throughout this region over the next several days. I'm just going to kind of draw a block in here, a rectangle, this is the area that we're going to watch. I'm going to put this into motion. And you can see over the first 24 hours, it kind of disappears. It's not very strong. But then by about hour 36, it comes back 
just east of 40 degrees longitude, and then it moves steadily off to the west, slowly gathering organization. The vorticity signature increases. You can see the yellows in there starting to increase. More wind flags with it. Wind barbs uh, are stronger. Uh, 30, 40 knots in there in some cases. So, you know, it takes it about five days to go from where it is now to just east of the Windward Islands near Barbados uh, and vicinity, and it slowly gathers strength. Now, each one of these model runs, we're probably going to see different results from this system, and there's a couple of key things I want to point out and that we all need to look for. The faster this moves through the next five days, the less likely it will be to develop, in my opinion. So this moving west at about 10 knots is right on the money for something that could end up developing because it's not racing off to the west underneath a crushing, dominant, uh, huge area of Bermuda Azores High out here where the trade winds are just screaming across the main development region. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. We'll see if this picks up speed, if it starts moving west at 18 to 22 knots or something like that, then I think it's going to have less of a chance to develop. And there's a lot of reasons behind that. So at least the 12Z run is holding on to what the 0Z run showed and the 6Z run showed that this goes on to develop. Now, we want to see, does the European, the ECMWF, show the same thing? Well, this is the very latest. It's literally rendering out. This is from Levi Cowan's website, tropicaltidbits.com. So this is literally like a live look. And you can see right up here in the uh, forecast times as they come out, and it's out to 96 hours. So let's just take a look. The vorticity signature, and this is the same level of the atmosphere, 850 millibars. And I guess it has a decent look to it right there. I think it got it right. Um, they're not going to be exactly matched up in terms of how they're displayed, etc. And But this is what it looks like. So we start at time zero, and then we go to 24 hours, uh, and then it's, and so this is unfortunately every 24 hours. So, you know, that's what you get on the public site. And then 48 hours out, it's elongated down there, you can see that. And then at 72 hours, still kind of elongated and stretched out. And then finally at the last frame, hey! Whoa, whoa, whoa! I'm seeing this for the first time just like you are. Look at that. At 96 hours, there it is. Okay, so this gives me confidence. And it's not, oh, yay, they're going to get hit by a storm on the islands. If someone says, you have heart disease, you need to do something about it. And I say someone, your doctor, and they're just full of it and they're wrong and they're basing it on bad imagery and bad tests. You know, pardon my French, but that's going to piss you off, right? If you don't have heart disease and someone tells you you do, that's kind of annoying in a huge way. The same thing as if these computer models are showing a hurricane coming your way and there's not going to be one at all, that kind of gets on people's nerves, and I can totally understand that. So my excitement here is for consistency, because doggone it, if something's going to come your way, we want you to have as much time as you can to prepare for it. It makes sense. So when I see this, the strengthening vorticity signature right there at 96 hours, and that starts to match, it's a little bit lower latitude than what the GFS has, but that's neither here nor there right now. The bottom line is it's there. And I'm going to look at this as a singular image, and I'm going to zoom in on it, and we can take a look at that. Uh, I mean, this is really big. So there it is. Not very impressive, it's not very strong, but it's there. It's not all stretched out, you know, like we've seen in prior runs. And by the way, that's the leftovers of TD4 in the Bahamas, really not doing much. So there it is at uh, 96 hours, and let's go back and maybe we'll get the 120 hour to come out while I'm yapping here and see if it matches. Um, so that's really important that we see these kind of line up in... Uh, in, in somewhat of a consensus. So now we have the Euro at 96 hours. And let's just go back real quick while I'm stalling and trying to improvise, because I want that right there. I want that 120 hour to show up live while I'm doing this. So if we look at 96 hours, 
where are we here? 27. All right, let's zoom ahead to 96. And let's see how that matches up with what the GFS shows. All right, so there's 96 hours on the GFS, and this is what I'm talking about. I'm going to zoom in for you. This is 96 on the GFS. In a similar location, the GFS is a little bit farther north, but they're about the same longitude in terms of how far in the Atlantic this has made it. And that's important, too, because that means that the GFS and the European are showing not only similar, similar vorticity signatures, but also similar speeds. You don't have one or the other lagging by several degrees of longitude over the same time frame. In other words, one is not way faster, not noticeably faster at all, than the other. So that's good to see. Ugh, still don't have the 120 hour. It's literally rendering, uh, I guess, how Levi created the code. It's polling or trying to talk to uh, the European Center's servers to get the data to turn it into a map. And I bet he is probably sort of pinging that I don't know, every second. I would if I was writing that code so that it would come out as fast as possible. Um, I may have to just give up the go. You know, I do want to show you one thing. It's interesting. Um, the Tropical Weather Outlook came out. It actually is the 2 o'clock you know, when they issue it. That's, that's the timestamp anyway. But it was written, I don't know, like at 1.45 Eastern Time. That's when I noticed that it got updated. And you can see there... Tropical cyclone formation is not expected during the next five days. I just hope this doesn't come back to haunt them because I personally would have waited to see if the Europeans showed anything. Um, I mean, it's not too big of a deal, even having a five-day window, if they have to change it to you know later today or, or tonight or tomorrow, that this becomes a possibility of development. That's still plenty of time, so I'm not knocking the Hurricane Center, but I think it's interesting that it's not mentioned yet in the tropical weather outlook, especially considering that we're getting a little bit of consensus here in the 96-hour shot uh, showing what it shows. Let me just refresh the page. Maybe that'll help. I don't know. Uh, and we may just have to call it a day, and you have to see it for yourself. Nope, still not there. All right, well, you know, this is interesting. You have to admit that the Euro and the GFS now are kind of lining up. Um, and so we'll see. You know, no reason to harp on it and continue to wait for that frame. So there you go. We've got the two major global models somewhat in alignment. They're not perfect, but it's, it's at least we're getting there. And that consistency is going to help, especially since this looks like it's destined to enter the islands of the Eastern Caribbean Sea. All right, so that'll be it for the updates today. I'm, I'll certainly put a, a written blog on hurricanetrack.com tonight, so look for that later tonight, uh, and then tomorrow, um, probably in the afternoon, around 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock Eastern, somewhere in there, I'll do the update. Uh, I have to travel to Chapel Hill, I have some business up there tomorrow and Tuesday, that's in the Triangle of North Carolina, Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill area, but be taking the laptop with me, and we'll just do an update uh, one time in the mid-afternoon. And then when I get back into town Tuesday night and Wednesday, we'll try to get these out a couple times a day because by then we're going to really know. All right, so a busy time ahead, that's for sure. I'll be on top of it. You can follow on Twitter, at Hurricane Track, and I'll be updating the blog, of course, at HurricaneTrack.com. And these videos, just as often as I can post them out. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and enable your notifications so when I do post an update, you can uh, at least get that. You know what? I'm going to cheat and look and see. Nope, still didn't come out. It's like waiting for Christmas and looking downstairs to see if somebody left something. That's a bad analogy, but you get the idea. I wanted to see if it was there yet. Have a good rest of your Sunday afternoon. Thanks for hanging out with me for a little bit twice today. I'm Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, and I'll talk to you a lot more over the week ahead.